Hello. In the previous video, we saw how at the front end, the signal started off at the frequency from the satellite and ended up at an intermediate frequency. And then we had something called a mixer that mixed it down to baseband. And that's shown in this slide here for review. And in this video, we're going to look at how does that happen? How does it work that we have a, a signal coming in here at L1 frequency from the satellite? And something happens inside this front end that mixes it down to an intermediate frequency, a lower frequency. And then we sample that lower frequency digitally and multiply by a similar, we have this frequency FIF plus FD, which we'll discuss later, the exact meaning of all that. But we generate a similar frequency here, multiply it together, have this low pass filter here. And we, we said that this takes away the the carrier wave and leaves us with the PRN code plus some noise. How does that happen? That's what we're going to look at today and analyze something called frequency mixers and down converters. So I've just extracted on the top left here the, the blocks that I just showed you. And we're going to do the analysis here by putting some algebra up here. So we say, let's suppose we have a, a sinusoid cosine omega 1 for some frequency omega 1. And it, it's not just a sinusoid. You see how it changes phase there. And that's the binary phase shifting that we have in GPS. And so we represent that by multiplying by dk. dk represents a digital signal, which would be plus or minus 1. So dk will be a series of plus or minus 1s corresponding to the code that modulates the signal at the satellite. And then we put a root 2 out front. And that's just for our convenience. And you'll see why in a minute. So that's the signal coming in to this mixer. And then we generate a sinusoid at of similar, of also the root 2 amplitude. And multiply those two together, have a low pass filter. And then we say that at the end of that, we, if we have omega 1 exactly matching omega 2, then we're going to end up with just the digital signal, just that code, the plus or sequence of plus or minus ones that we started with up in the satellite. So how does, how does this happen? How does it get wiped off? Well, well, let's just go back to some high school trigonometry, which you all learned. And maybe when you learned it, you never thought you would use it again. But here you are using this. So thank your math teacher. So we start with, we, we look at something real simple, cosine a plus b. And the, the identity for that is cos a plus b is cos a cos b minus sine a sine b. And cos a minus b is cos a cos b plus sine a sine b. And we just add up uh, both these equations. And so this, this term just disappears. And we'll get 2 cos a cos b, which we put over on the left here. And on the right, we've, we've got cos a moving from the left to the right, cos a cos plus b cos a minus b. So it's you get a signal that's the sum of the two terms and another signal that's the difference of the two terms. And so if we think of a as our omega 1 t and b as the omega 2 t and just copy everything down here, we'll see that after doing the multiply here, we've, we've got instead of cos a cos b, we've got cos omega 1 t cos omega 2 t. And we've got the dk from up here brought down. And the root 2 times the root 2 gives us the 2. And so you see the value of those root 2s now that matches this 2 over here. And, and on, on the right, we know from this identity that we just looked at in the yellow box, it's just cosine of the sum and cosine of the difference. And then the amplitude is this dk from, from this term here. And so that's how those signals come out of this multiplier. And then with the low pass filter, it just removes the high frequency term. So the sum term is going to be a high frequency term higher than uh, this omega 1 for whatever omega 2 is. And, and so what typically what happens is we'll have this low pass filter at some value in between omega 1 and 0. And that will cancel this term completely. And we're simply left with dk times cosine of the difference in the frequencies. And therefore, if the, different, if the frequencies match each other exactly, we get cosine of 0, which is 1. And so this will disappear. And we're left with dk, which is what we showed there. And that's how the mixer and the down converter works. Now, we also talked about intermediate frequencies at the front of the receiver. 
And we'll skip back to that. In the front end, you have similar down converters, but instead of multiplying by the exact same frequency or something very close to the same frequency, you multiply something offset by an intermediate frequency. And then you have, instead of a low pass filter, you have a band pass filter. And that's how we mix down to intermediate frequency. So it's very much the same thing, the same equations, but a band pass filter and an intermediate frequency at this stage. So now, that was the case for when frequencies matched. So as we just looked at, when omega 1 exactly matches omega 2, we're just left with this digital signal dk that comes out, and then you can get the PRN code as, as shown there. But what if the frequencies don't exactly match? Well, then after the low pass filter, instead of just having dk, we're going to have this omega 1t minus omega 2t, uh, or this term here, omega 1 minus omega 2 times t. And so instead of it just being a digital signal, it's going to look like a digital signal, but with some slowly moving sinusoid. And how slowly will the sinusoid will move at this difference of these two frequencies, omega 1 minus omega 2. And you'll, what we'll see is that when we're searching for signals, we don't know initially exactly what frequencies they're at. Now, you might say, oh, but I thought we knew what frequencies the satellite transmits at. And we do know that exactly. But the satellites are moving. You might be moving. And your local oscillator might not be well known. And so there are frequency offsets that you don't know and we're going to have to search for. So when you're searching for the signal, then, of, then d the, your frequency that you generate is definitely different from your received frequency because you don't know in advance exactly what your received frequency is. So you're always going to have this residual frequency riding on the PRN code. So, so how do you deal with that? Well, we, we deal with it in a, by introducing yet another mixer called a quadrature mixer, and which is exactly 90 degrees out of phase with this, this mixer, which the, this mixer is called the in-phase mixture because we, we, we're trying to get, we have a, a signal coming in here, cosine omega 1, and we try to generate the exact same frequency at, at the, uh, with the same phase. So we call this in-phase. But we know that, the, that we can't match omega 1 to omega 2 exactly before we've acquired the signal because we don't know exactly what the signal is at. So we're going to be left with this kind of of slowly varying sinusoid on top of our PRN code. And so to deal with that, we generate what's called a quadrature mixer in parallel to the in-phase mixer. And, and, and what the quadrature mixer does is instead of generating a, a cosine here, while the in-phase mixture is generating the cosine, at the same time we generate a sine wave. And, so, and then that will produce something at the output uh, that's shifted by 90 degrees. And so we'll just go through the math here uh, so that you can see it. So this one I thought we'd do by hand. So, so how do you do this? Well, we, start, we, we begin with this uh, formula, sine a plus b. And so sine a plus b is just sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. So there's you know, another high school identity. And then sine a minus b is sine a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. And so now what we want to do is say, let's, let's call this equation 1 and that equation 2. And let's look at what do we get if we take 2 minus 1. So this time, in this case, we, we're going to take the bottom equation minus the top equation. So, so these terms are the same, so they disappear. And we, we've got m minus cosine a sine b and another minus cosine a sine b. So we get minus 2 cosine a sine b. And that's equal to the bottom minus the top. So it's sine of the difference minus sine of the sum of these two terms. And so just like before, we had cosine of the sum and difference. Here we get sine of the sum and difference. That's what's coming out of the multiplier. And 
if we then pass it through a low pass filter, the, the high frequency term will disappear. We, we're going to be left with dk sine of a, which is omega 1, minus b, which is omega 2, and all of that times t. So we, we get a very similar formula to what we had before, but before where we had cosine of the difference of the frequencies, here we have sine of the difference of the frequencies. And so we've generated something at 90 degree phase shift or in quadrature to the other signal, and that's going to be very useful in what we do later.